I just watched the Rick and Morty finale, and I'll be honest, it was not the greatest thing I've ever seen. I mean, obviously, I'm a fan of the Venture Bros, so no animation quite lives up, but you know what I mean. Because, well, one, my prediction that Jerry dies was wrong. He did become a puddle, but I imagine that won't be sticking around because, well, not a lot has changed in Rick and Morty since season one. And, well, that got me thinking. What has changed a lot since season one? The Venture Bros. So, here we are, another top ten, or some kind of list, I don't know if there's ten of them. But, what's changed since season one? And it's a load of stuff. Firstly, um, after the season one finale where Hank and Dean bite the dust and... Spoilers ahead. Obviously. But we learn that Hank and Dean after they're brutally murdered in season one. Hank and Dean turn out to be clones. Which is a mind-boggling revelation and lets you kill off your primary protagonist. Which, I mean, God, I don't know if any other show has done that at the end of the first season. If you have a clumsy child, you make him wear a helmet. If you have death-prone children, you keep a few clones of them in your lab. Speak of the devils! They're and we also see all the clones wiped out. Um, not quite a change from season one to season seven, because I guess you go from no clones to no clones, but in season end of season three, the monarch murders them all. He does a pretty good job of eliminating all of the remaining slugs except D19. <laughs> The monarch gets married. He goes from being a sort of loner with a girlfriend named Dr. Girlfriend, bit of a side character and a joke, to start off with in a kind of one note joke. Buddy, what are you going on about? Shh, don't call me that in front of the henchmen. Keep it professional. Eventually becomes her own character in her own way. She has proper character growth and she gets married. She stops being Dr. Girlfriend. She becomes Dr. Mrs. The Monarch. Well, and Dr. Fiance. Monarch, Dr. Girlfriend. The Guild of Calamitous Intent hereby approves your application for duoship. I now pronounce you villain and villainous. You may kiss your queen. Um, I guess talk to my wife, but uh, that's not for me to say. E at the end of the season when we see the monarch is no longer with Dr. Girlfriend. And well, we're not sure how that's going to end up. As your one note character who won't come back. Or oh, we'll see on Phantom Limb's arm. But no, we see her and him get married. And one of the better, happier relationships I think we see in the show. Jonas Venture Jr. Born at the end of season one. Uh, we imagine him a small, deformed tumour that has erupted from Rusty to, well... Samson, I'm giving you an order. You're my bodyguard, right? Well, he came out of my body, so you'd be, uh, violating your primary... Yeah, uh, yeah, I get it, Doc. <coughs> Looks like botched attempted fratricide runs in the family. Follow in Rusty's footsteps and be a failure, but unlike Rusty, he really got all of the good genes from Joan as well. Except the ones for, you know, Winning in the womb. But Jojo, but JJ becomes a massive success, building a, rebuilding his father's skyscraper in New York, building an empire, and well, he does pretty well with the ladies. And of course, cutting edge scientific research. Step into our stellar casino. Ooh, love that gravity. Whatever your pleasure. Because the largest space station ever built is also the first ever to be open to the public. Sergeant Hatred. Uh, not even introduced in the first season of the show. Coming in at the Monarch's wedding, I believe, is our first time we see him. But he might have been a tag sale. Alright, in the editing, if I remember, we're going to put up a big thing to say if he was in tag sale. But... Sergeant Hatred becomes 
Well, those perfect little toes, so plump, like little nibbles, like little corn nibbles. Maze. <laughs> oh, that's right, honey. Hot damn it, those things are beautiful. Give me, give me. Doc's arch enemy, and then Doc's bodyguard, and then Sergeant Vatrin, completely changing his moniker and becoming a well better character. He does still have some flaws. Um, ones that I might get this video flagged, so I'm not going to say it out loud. Um, and eventually becomes sort of a tour guide, or maybe a security guard to the Bentec Tower, but... I used to be a supervillain, and I was in the OSI! I can tell you where King Gorilla used to hide his porn lobby, so... Uh, oh, you got the old crap you see lying around, one overweight tour guide, and your pistol, that is clearly not loaded. He's definitely changed a lot since season one where he just wasn't in the show 21 and 24 were inseparable in season one whenever one was on screen we saw the other they were buddies they were incompetent yet immortal the perfect henchman big girl we are talking about a large healthy woman of questionable stability. Oh, you are totally underestimating the never say die scrappiness of a survivor. Hey, guess what? Nobody cares who would win in a crazy fantasy fist fight between Anne Frank and Lizzie Borden. Until 24 dies. And he's just dead. We've not seen 24 come back. He was a ghost for a little bit. Um, or maybe some kind of hallucination brought on from grief. Never quite sure on that one. I've always assumed ghosts. It's the Venture Bros. Coming back from the dead's not particularly special. No! And on 24's death, 21 becomes awesome. Gary went from being a sort of fat, pudgy, well, henchman to the monarch's number what number one. Yeah, he is now second in command of the fluttering horde. Hilt wins, monarch! Out. You and me too. I don't want to have to be a villain without him. I don't have that kind of staff racks grudge. I just want to help my best friend with his hate. F you guys, Monarch crew, head for a life. He has made them into, well, maybe not a, an elite fighting force, but a fighting force, which is more than they ever were before. Um, and since Doctor Girlfriend, who is now Doctor Mrs. The Monarch, um, has now stopped being the monarch's sidekick um, as she has, well, outranked him, the henchman 21 has filled their place from sort of a lovable chubby side character, kind of like a dog to the fluttering horde. He's become its leader. He is now truly two ton 21. Triana leads. In season one, we saw her and Dean, the start of a Will they? Probably not. It doesn't seem like she's interested relationship. Gentlemen, this is my daughter. Daddy has a most important guest. Pumpkin, why don't you see if, um... Dean, his name is Dean. He pines after her for most of the show while they are still at the compound. Um, but, but before the end of season four, she often leaves. She finds her own life, as many people do in the real world, and I can imagine lots of people would want to leave the, uh, compound. I've been doing a lot of thinking, and, uh, I think we should see other people. Long-distance relationships can be rough. You are so wise, Dean. I'm gonna miss you. Or maybe we could try a long-distance relationship. Dean starts to become his father no longer. The innocent boy adventurer with a passing interest in science. Maybe someone who will help the world in the long run. Dean becomes his father, becoming a bit of an arsehole at the end of season four. Has his emo shriek, finds out he's a clone, finds out his father is a clone, which makes him more similar than most people would ever. Uh, the most people are probably ever with their father. Normal people haven't died multiple times. And then eventually... Dean goes full Rusty Venture in Season 7 and sleeps with his brother's girlfriend. 
Um, while Rusty might not have had the move to put it off, Dean sure does. Wood. <gasps> Hank! It's not what you think. Mm. What is... No, it is what you think. Wait, what do you think it is? I think you were freezing to death and did this to survive? The Ventures moved to New York City. They've been on this compound for, well, the first five seasons. But in season six, we see the boys and their dad move to New York. Living it up big time. I mean, Rusty's never made enough money to afford a place in New York. Let alone his whole... Um, let alone his own building. He's still riding his father's bootstraps, living in a... somewhere in... I can only assume Colorado? That may be very wrong. I don't know anything about America. And, as illustrated here, uh, the Venge Bros doesn't use the normal map of America. <laughs> and, finally, Hank becomes the Bat. He has started his training with Brock Sampson in Season 1. He's using moves taught by Brock to take out ships full of pirates. And Leave it. You're not ready. Now I want you to put your hand around your throat, Hank. Uh, all right. That tube you feel is your trachea. Think of it as a handle. Your thumb is on your carotid artery. That's your butt. Now remember... And hit this obsession with badass with badass heroes eventually starts to lead to hang down the Batman path. Well, plus the fact that he's his favorite superhero character and may have killed himself replicating his moves. Um, but as Hank continues his adventure, he has more and more Batman themed escapades and eventually, and after a harrowing experience in a jungle in South America, Hank discovers that he has the abilities to be the bat. He has been chosen by nature to be the bat. Yes, mother. I shall become a bat. Oh. And after the brutal betrayal of his closest ally and brother, Dean, Hank is now ready to face the world, to face the supervillains, and I can't wait for the movie. Um, only another, oh, it's a Venture Bros property. It could be out anywhere in the next 10 years. Hopefully sooner rather than later. And with that, I will catch you in the next video.